Welcome to another episode of Tangent World. I'm Brad Reed. I'm Chip Goddard. And of course, on this episode of Tangent <laughs> World, we'll be watching a movie. Yep. Watch along. Yep. And this one was uh, was uh, from your wife. Yeah. yeah. She sent us an email. <laughs> JustWorld at gmail.com. Analog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she did actually. She just came in the room, but it was great. We were discussing what we should do next. I don't remember whose pick it was. Yeah, we... Uh, we we're going to try to do more movies that we haven't seen, yeah. like the both of us haven't seen. Yeah, because those are fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, Bubba Hotep was good, but I felt like you you already knew what was going on, yeah. and I didn't know anything. <laughs> right, and, uh, you know, like, I felt kind of annoyed at points, because it was like, come on, Brad, this is an important part. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, and yeah. I was like, shrug. I just don't think it works like, it, it works as well. <laughs> oh, you know, we, we'll probably do some of the movies we've seen before, but maybe if it's like we yeah. both have seen it. Yeah, not maybe not this format. Yeah, because like Kevin in the Woods was fine. Yeah, yeah. that was good. So, uh, but uh, this one, Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah, what's uh, the the full title, man? Man, it's the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, people just shorten it to Buckaroo Banzai. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it came out in 1984, so I would have been five, uh, and I was not a twinkle yet. <laughs> Um, well, they do say that, like, the mother's eggs are with her since, like, you know. I mean, for, it's, okay, half of me. Yeah. Half of me was around. Yeah, you were around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot older than you think. <laughs> uh, directed by W.D. Richter, and oh my God, like, when we found out all the people that were in it. It has an amazing cast. Peter Weller, <laughs> Ellen Barkin, John Lithgow. Oh, man. And, like, some of them, uh, you know, we did, we, we did a video where we watched the trailer too <laughs> and like it was like is that no, no that can't yes no. it is it's yeah uh harry and the hendersons yep <laughs> uh jeff goldblum right he's a cowboy like yes. how he's the only cowboy in like the whole movie it looks like christopher lloyd is in uh, this movie doc brown yeah <laughs> so uh hey just real quick did you get taken in by the uh fake back to the future four uh i i saw it and i was like that'd be neat like, yeah. I didn't think it'd be great. And I was like, but they're both old as shit. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tangent world. But I think it would be good if they did it to where, like, they pass it on to, you know, they gave yeah. the DeLorean to somebody else. You, they, you beat Michael J. Fox in a game of Jenga yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> playing for keys, old man. Oh, Jenga. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so uh, we've got we've got Buckaroo Bonsai, or if you want me to, do I have to say the full thing, or are we good with um, the um, well, I'll let you shorten it for, <laughs> for now. Um, from the eighth <laughs> dimension. <laughs> Um, Across man, the eighth dimension. You'll have to look out for aliens, interdimensional aliens. <laughs> uh, they're called Red Electroids from Planet 10. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so you can probably tell this is action, sci-fi, <laughs> comedy, satire, romance. Romance. There's always got to be some romance. So. I think it uh, sounds like a perfect combination. We've got it pulled up. Um, if you are out there and you're like, I don't know where to find it. Yeah. Email us. Yep. Justworld at gmail.com. And we will give you instructions. Yes. Yes. So if you're crazy in the head <laughs> and you actually want to watch it whilst listening to us. Or if you're just like, man, you know, these guys make this movie sound okay. Exactly. Because I, I have a feeling this one's going to be good. Uh, really good. I hope so. Or it's going to be really bad, but it's going to be so bad it's good. Well, you know, I did a little research beforehand. Like, I didn't watch any of yeah. them, but I just, you know, looked up who who has said what about this movie. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like Kevin Smith, like, has a pretty, pretty big fascination with this movie. He's a big fan. Um, I know this is true because I listen to uh, Fat Man on Batman a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when my wife mentioned the movie, the, immediately I thought, I've heard Kevin Smith speak of this movie before. I can't remember if him and Mark were talking about it just, you know, back in the day. It's a movie that I think that they were saying... What movies would you like to have remade, basically? Why would they re... Uh, no. Stop remaking movies. <laughs> or... They're going to remake Arachnophobia. I like, saw that. Garbage. I saw that. Is John Goodman in it? He better be. Yeah. He needs the job. <laughs> he needs <laughs> I, to work after Roseanne. <laughs> I don't even remember that movie. I think I saw it in the 90s when it first came out, and that's the only time, and I liked it. I liked that movie uh, back then. Oh, I loved it. I had it on but VHS, man. Watched all I all can the time. remember is that John Goodman was in it. John Goodman was great. Yeah. He was great. 
Uh, I love John Goodman. That's why the Big Lebowski is on the list. It's on the list, man. And we since have a, we've both seen it, that would work. Yeah, we yeah. have a huge list. <laughs> yeah, it is huge. But yeah, yeah. So I remember them discussing it in some way. So I, w- I thought immediately when she suggested it, dope, I'm in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're at zero zero dot zero zero, and uh, I guess you ready? No, I'll give you a countdown. All right, here we go. Uh, three, two, one. All right, you should be seeing the lion doing his lion thing. And here we go. <laughs> Some uh, 80s amazing movies. I love 80s movies. Uh, they're so cheesy and bad and awesome. Like, I don't know if it's because, you know, I grew up on them, you know, and so there's that nostalgia, but I just love them. <laughs> The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai. That's loud. Yeah, you might want to turn it down a little bit. I'm going to mess everything up. Here, are you trying to... You use the down arrow, usually. You got to hit the function button. Oh, no, usually just on the... Buckaroo Banzai, born to an American mother and a Japanese father, thus began life as he was destined to live it, going in several directions at once. A brilliant neurosurgeon, this restless young man grew quickly dissatisfied with a life devoted solely to medicine. He roamed the planet studying martial arts and particle physics, collecting around him a most eccentric group of friends, those hard-rocking scientists, the Hong Kong Cavaliers. And now, with his astounding jet car ready to for a bold assault on the dimensional barrier, Buckaroo Banzai faces the greatest challenge of his life. Well, high above Earth, an alien did something. <laughs> uh, d- uh, did you see the uh, Hong Kong Cavaliers? They uh, lost the NBA championship the other day. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> John Lithgow. They're also, they got some... Uh, some subtitles going on, I guess. No. I want an electromagnetic fuel reading from the launch. <laughs> uh, some kind of uh, launch about to happen. Yeah. T minus seven seconds, basically. Oh man, look at that ambulance. Multi stage axial compressor. <laughs> this room is literally in like some church basement. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> we got those at the army surplus because <laughs> this is my group of like. Looks like he's got cold feet. Better go see what's keeping the boss for you. Why me? Because I'm busy. Because I'm busy. Yeah, have the curb, yes, if you'll please. It's not here, Dr. Bonsai. Uh, let me have this straight one. <laughs> Is he checking his colon or what? <laughs> so, sorry I'm late to the, to the missile launch. I was in surgery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My rock and roll friends were over here hanging out. Why is he all over the dude's shoulder, though? That's creepy. On my own, me at this point, I was ready to say, that's it, let's get out. See, you can check your anatomy all you want. And even though oh, that's Jeff Goldblum. Get right down to it. He's the one over the shoulder. Oh, okay. No, 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 don't tug on that. You never know what it might be attached to. <laughs> <laughs> He's just letting his friend, like, work on him. Yeah. Dr. Banzai is using a laser to vaporize a pineal tumor without damaging the quadrature. The pineal gland, that's uh, where supposedly your body makes some DMT. Raise the left arm or throw the hard phone. People are going to come from all over. This boy is an Eskimo. You ever thought about joining me full time? What the? Are you serious? Do you have an opening? Can you sing? Yeah, I can dance. Is he recruiting for his band? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Jeff Gold- <laughs> like it looks like Jeff Goldblum is actually a doctor. Oh. The guy just spilled his coffee checking his watch. 
<laughs> the guy in the background? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw it. We're keeping that tape. <laughs> I hope it was... Yeah. Ah, uh, jeez. What's this jalopy supposed to do anyway? Was it that guy in the John Deere outfit? <laughs> no, it was like some <laughs> stooge, like some other stooge. Oh, okay. Oh, he's testing his flying car. His space car. What a life. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is what Doctor Strange wanted to be. Like. <laughs> yeah. Control, this is HB88. Commander's voice check. Over. Oh God, this. This is already gold, man. <laughs> Roger, I copy. I just, I really can't believe I've never seen it. It's, I mean, yeah. It looks like something I should have seen. I feel like my dad would like this. Is that a flux capacitor? It looked like it. <laughs> they stole that from Doc Brown. That's the whole thing kind of looks like a DeLorean type. Yeah. It's probably left over in the prop room. That's... <laughs> when was... Uh, Back to the Future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look that up. He's got a naked dude, just like like a naked dude picture in his. Nineteen eighty five. So they copied. They copied Buckaroo. Yeah, they did. We need to talk to Spielberg. Yeah. Was it Spielberg? No, uh, Zemeckis, right? Yeah, Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, we need to talk to Zemeckis. Somebody's owed some money. <laughs> that was my flux capacitor. Yeah. Or, Did or he go back in time and it, stole it? Yeah. Yeah. If he goes uh, uh, into time, then <laughs> he probably crosses dimensions. Time's only a dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Let's get over. I'm kind of mad at my mom now. Why wasn't I taken to this movie? <laughs> what kind of car is that? Three, two, one. Oh, yeah, that's probably what happens. He goes off course and ends up in a different dimension. Uh, What's-his-name was acting like it was completely, like, expected. Oh, okay. Oh, shit, he's decompressing? <laughs> Buckaroo. Buckaroo. <laughs> so weird. Uh, Armed? Are they gonna shoot him? He's gonna ramp off the mountain. <laughs> Please ramp off the mountain. That'd be awesome. Like he ramps up the mountain. Oh no, he's splitting. That's a that's a splitting space time or dimensional time. Uh oh. I thought he had like some kind of cool laser on his thing. Oh man, look at those graphics. Oh, he's in Tron. <laughs> Crossover. Yep. 
Another dimension. So, a new galaxy. So what you're telling me is he's also the reason we uh, are invaded by these aliens from the eighth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he leaves and they come back? Yeah, I feel like he probably, yeah. Yeah, he that kill- could be so. Yeah, so he kills their dudes. Intergalactic planetary. <laughs> Damn. Like, anybody can make, like, a movie like this now with After Effects. Yeah. <laughs> with, like, better quality. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but wait a minute. A hundred miles off course. But now he's got, like, alien goo on his on the front of his car. So he went through, like, some kind of dimensional wall to go through the mountain. Yeah. And in that inner dimension, there's, like, naked baby people. Floating around. Couldn't you couldn't just wait for it to stop. <laughs> uh oh, because the dry ice bomb went off. <laughs> Why does he look like the foot clan? Cause he's half Japanese, man. He's he cowboy he's buckaroo bonza. Yeah, well. I did watch the Ninja Turtles movie the other day. <laughs> yeah. It was great. The fog machine works. <laughs> that <laughs> checks out. So yeah, probably shouldn't have ran over that guy. But this is Peter Weller, right? Yeah. Okay. He's, he's just bu- so young here. He's, he's Buckaroo Banza, man. Right. Right. When you look at Peter Weller, aren't you like, oh, that dude's half Japanese? No. Is he? <laughs> Is he or you just say that? I mean, you tell me. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. I don't think I touched that alien good, though. Yeah. Oh, no, there's an alien thing on the... Oh, it's a brain. Mm. It's got that alien's brain... St- <laughs> he looks so different. John Lithgow can be so creepy. I oh, I know. He's he's got an incredible range. Well, of what's actor. that other movie where he's like a bad guy and he tortures tortures that dude in a pool, mm. like an empty pool, and then he makes the guy think he's crazy because the he refills the pool overnight. <laughs> I'll have to look. Uh, he was in Dexter, of course. Yeah great on that and then of course like i say he's done comedy you know third rock from the sun yeah he was great in that yeah he he's he's great in everything he does uh, yeah he's gonna be in the new pet cemetery too oh yes not two is like they're only remaking two it's right, two right. is in also as well whoa whoa nope not half japanese in the least what is he doing Oh, well, that's cool. So he electrocuted his brain. Dr. Lizardo. Looks like he was trying to make the... The weird laser portal thing. Oh, yeah, the... I see. So, like, he's crazy in one dimension, and he's like Dr. Lazardo in another dimension? Is that what's up? <laughs> I don't know. I think he's going to crash into the wall. 
just smash right into the wall. John Lithgow actually did this movie <laughs> after Footloose. Never saw it. Oh, he's only like halfway in. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so he went crazy from going in there or he get, was like possessed by one of them yeah yeah maybe he is possessed oh, who knows movie's nuts this is so weird but what I was I thought that was interesting that this was after Footloose because that mean to me it means that this must have been a decently big movie yeah because he was already a household name at that point <laughs> three letter word <laughs> Oh, fuck, that's the that's the guy from Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Mike. Thanks, Doc. I come for your TV. Then you're using too much juice. Another 10,000 kilowatts again this month. That beats me. I don't know if a loony can use that much power. No, I'm taking it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm going home with my overthrust. <laughs> It's terrific, Doc. <laughs> I'll make sure you get an early wake up. Uh, <laughs> Doc, for why you can, monkey boy. Monkey boy. He must be one of them. Buckaroo. I've done a spectrographic analysis on the specimen you pulled off the chicken. I bet that dude's not even Japanese. <laughs> why why are we uh why we're not gonna have any more japanese listeners after today They're like all this disinformation i mean i don't know you want it already you got it hey i'm the fun <laughs> hey oh yeah yeah we Definitely got to see Buckaroo Banza in his rock and roll band. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him do surgery. We've uh -huh. seen him test pilot a, an experimental vehicle. Yeah. And now uh, now he's going to live his, his other persona. Buckaroo Banza and the Hong Kong Cavaliers. But like you said, they're not very good at basketball. No, they suck. They're about to lose their star player, too. <laughs> Look at that haircut. See, this is the future I wanted to live in. I wanted to live in, like, the future of the 80s. Yeah. Like, Back to the Future 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like... Yeah. <laughs> I wanted everything to be neon and have weird, just stupid shapes and colors for no reason. <laughs> and shoulder pads. Where'd my shoulder pads go? Everybody, uh, everybody had shoulder pads in the... You know, shoulder pads are probably... That's See? probably okay to leave in the 80s. Look at that hair, though. Yeah. Look, looks like a poodle. See, all these guys have shoulder pads. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's grow some shoulders, bro. <laughs> I like the pointy shoulder pads. I love how he's playing the French horn. Yeah. This is what we need to start saying. We need this guy to be our hype man. Yeah. Somebody crying out 
trying. Oh this my. is so weird for a, a, a rock and roll show. <laughs> How did he know? Why the hell would this would be the worst thing to do to a to a woman that's crying? <laughs> it's yeah. like put her in, in on the on the spot. Yeah. Hell is on her head. Pretty. Yeah. This is such a weird scene. It's like, yeah. it's, it doesn't hey, sense. glad I put you on the spot and you had to tell everybody you didn't have any money. Yeah. Have You're fun a at loser this. at yeah. the club. Have fun at the club. <laughs> oh, she's drinking some of that Vat 69. I don't think they'd let you bring in outside alcohol to clubs. Probably not. I mean, this is the, the 80s future. Yeah. Everything was allowed in the 80s, so. Hopes and dreams. Uh, Peter Weller was also in Dexter. Uh, I do. Was it? He was the undercover, like the mm-hmm. P.I. Yeah. The disgraced cop P.I. Yeah. That was on Dexter's trail for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen him pop up every now and again and stuff. I would have never recognized him in this yeah. if, if I didn't already know he was the name Peter Well. And then the Kurgans in this. The whom? The Kurgan from Highlander. Oh yeah. Uh oh shit. Whoa! Don't shoot yourself, girl. What kind of gun is that? Uh, Three eighty. No, that's like a twenty-five. I can actually look it up. Oh, everybody's got guns. Look like a little 25 caliber Colt, though. I didn't know there'd be that many guns in this. I'd have, I'd, I'd <laughs> yeah, have, now you're screwed. I'd have prepared. Big booty. And you tell him that it's John Warfin calling. That's W H O R F I N. You got that funny John. Yes, she had a Colt 1908 pocket pistol in 25 caliber. Ah, damn, I'm good. Pretty good. Uh, Weller looked. Of course, it's me. What was Peter Weller's? Gun of choice. Uh, our friend John over at Saints. John. He uh, went to Seattle and went to the Pop Culture Museum. Yeah. And he had a couple. Of, I don't know if he showed you the pictures because we sent, we're sending them your way. But it was like a bunch of guns from different movies. And I bet one of them was Robocop, the one that he was questioning. Because it was like guns from Star Wars and just different movies. You know, all, all of them gathered together. So yeah. hit him up next time you see him. And if you go to Saints, go tell him you want to see his phone. All all our listeners. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just tell him. He'll, he'll let you see his He's phone. He's the head chef. You'll be able to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a Buckaroo Bonsai video game. Is that what they're playing? That's what they were playing. Oh, man. Is that meta or is he just that popular? I'm both, man. 
Buckaroo and hurt. Pictures don't lie. Met my first wife that way. Look at that thing he's holding, that contraption. I think that was the first Game Boy. Plus, Buckaroo has to think so too, or else he wouldn't be ready. Who the f? What? This dude just. Just hot off the world watch wire. Wouldn't be able to do that these days. Is that white guy? Remember that old Italian professor? That's a cultural appropriation, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they would say. I don't know. I don't know what he's wearing exactly, so I couldn't say. I think if it's not like some kind of um, thing that you have to earn, like in the military or religiously, or you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, if it's just fashion, whatever. Who cares? I mean, I don't give a shit either way. Yeah. If you want to wear. You want to wear a headdress, wear a headdress. I, I'm of the same opinion. I don't really care. Yeah. If other people don't like it, you have to deal with that. Because, but... I mean, here's the thing. A really pretty girl with a headdress on uh-huh. is a really pretty girl with a headdress on. <laughs> <laughs> but a... Uh... <laughs> an ugly white guy? An ugly white guy with a headdress on is still just an ugly-ass white guy with a headdress on. Could be above ground testing in China. Maybe sunspot activity. Man, it's that is an awesome old boomba. I know. I was just thinking that. And here oh. is here is Jeff Goldblum. I love Jeff Go- Treasure. Jeff Goldblum's a treasure. He is a treasure. He's up there with, with Pacino and De Niro. He, and- he's got to be a, a treasure C, though. If if Pacino's a treasure B. Why the f- Look at his luggage. <laughs> he has the coolest, like, slaughtered a cow to make this luggage. Congratulations. The thing that I, I I have to put him as a C for this reason, Goldblum? Yeah, because he's still in like some kind of freaking phone or apartment commercial trying to play somebody else. UF, bro. Yeah, like, UF. No, Jeff Goldblum. Like Jeff Goldblum's the man. No. He's he is a treasure. He is like a quality treasure. C treasure. No, he like. He's in the Platinum Club. No, I mean, you've yeah. got, you had Anthony Hopkins, which I totally agree, as yeah. an A treasure. Yeah. Jack Nicholson. Okay. As an A treasure. We could put Jack Nicholson, Jeff Goldblum, and Anthony Hopkins in a movie. It would be the best movie ever made. But Jeff Goldblum would be the B guy in that movie. Doesn't so matter. he's at least a B treasure. I don't know, man. But if you put Al Pacino as a B treasure, then I think Jeff Goldblum has to be a C treasure. I mean, I... I He's I only consider though. treasures A. I mean, there's nothing, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm creating all these sub-treasures. Oh, there's no such thing as a sub-treasure. There is. No. Like, in my life, you're a treasure D. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You're still a treasure, though, yeah, Chip. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I got, like, my wife. She's probably a C. <laughs> I've got I've got my PS4. That's probably a B treasure. That, that, that's up there, man. That's <laughs> man. He's like, because I think you're sexy. I like girls who try to kill themselves at my show. When I was in a band, we never had anything that cool happen. Right. You always thought there was going to be a, a lot more sex drugs that went with rock and roll, but... When was the last time you went to Sweden? <laughs> I need to go to Actually, Sweden. I might go next year. Really? Yeah. What do you want from me? My God. friend that was in town last night, he has a cousin from there. Yeah? And he's like, yeah, there's this big, we do a big family reunion every couple of years. Like, you're welcome to come. I was like, let me know, bro. That would be awesome. Take me with. I'll uh, play a show there. Yeah. I'd be like, I know this guy. He's actually kind of big in, in a metal band. We're not metal. Or death metal. Or, We're not death. Or black metal. Or it's whatever, more like stoner rock. Whatever you call it. Hard rock. R&B. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in an R&B band. I mean, it's an R&B band if you want it to be. That's all you, you just call it that. Yeah. Killer Gandhi. Smooth R&B. I'm adopted. Of course. If it was a snake, it'd have bit me. Another you. Anything's possible. Let her out. Hey, me too. Let her out. Yeah, let her out. 
Hey, hey, me too. No, she's not. And give you a code. Why me? Because you're perfect. Yeah, she's not. And give you a point there. <laughs> I'd like to uh, move this thing uh, along. Perhaps some of you noticed we have a motorcycle. Uh, I, they should never remake this movie. They it's, can't remake this movie. I mean, it, yeah, it would not have the same spirit. Yeah. <laughs> it needs a low budget. Yeah. Yeah. They would probably mess it up. Without further ado, I'd uh, like to introduce a young man who. They'd get like Johnny Depp or something to, to be. I got that mic sitting right behind us, that Shure SM7B he's talking into. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We should be using that. Uh, it's actually, I doubt that they're actually using it for this because it's it picks up, you have to get right up in it, mm. and it kind of picks up low, and which is nice for, like, recording stuff. I use it for production. <laughs> this is our driftwood spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent world. That's what that is. That is totally driftwood. It is driftwood. Those are the, uh, what are they? The Electroids? Electroids. Red Electroids. That's opposed to blue Electroids. Yeah. Hey, there's a... What's his name from... Gremlins. Was he in Gremlins? No, he wasn't in Gremlins. Wasn't he in... Uh, no, he wasn't in Quantum Leap, was he? The rest of this rock is actually only empty space. So back in 1937, Professor Akita here and Dr. Emilio Lazardo figured that if solid matter were mostly just empty space, a person should be able to discover a way to travel inside things. We at the Banzai Institute have at last found that way. We have created a device called an oscillation overthruster. Which I'm going to have it here completely unexposed. No security. <laughs> oh, I get it. What you're saying is that oppositely charged particles collide and blow each other up in a burst of energy. Like a tiny big bang, like a, a, a baby bang. Man, they're talking about the Hydron Collider, like, way back in the 80s. No, no, it's not obvious at all. It was obvious everybody would be doing it every day. See, by all accounts, it appears as though I literally went right through a mountain. But you could take like both of those guys, like they've been in a lot of stuff like over the years, but I couldn't tell you either of their names. For the rest of your natural life. And you would never ever find this. And yet this living organism came out of that mountain in Texas with me. Even though I was never inside that mountain. President's calling, by the way. President of what? President of the United States. <laughs> oh. Okay. Later. The president of what? Real fuzzy. I passed him through to a payphone down the hall. Uh, uh Buckaroo, you forgot your thruster. What are you going around doing for a while? Oh, sexy. Damn. Give her the thruster. I know I just met you, but would you like to be up on a... I mean, yeah, she... She would have fucked him right there. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, I know my mics like you know your guns. Yeah. Yeah. Not really, though. You're actually way better at guns than even I am at mics. Nah. <laughs> But speaking of knowing things, that is actually a 1982 uh, era phone booth that he was sitting, Danny. How do you know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell? <laughs> Not with Elvin Bravo. Oh, that's from the uh, Ma Bell Company. Look, <laughs> Ed, go back to the bus and I'll reroute this call to the president's private suite at Walter Reed Hospital. Yeah, make sure. Walter Reed, that's my grandpa. I think you should start wearing clothes like that, like uh, like Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, he looks like um, Lawrence Fishburne from the Pee Wee Herman movie oh, oh, or they, the show. Oh crap! They just shocked him. Don't touch. Him. They just shocked him. But. He just solved the theory of everything. Oh, they speak English. That's awesome. Uh, and convenient for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just a real quick question. Sure. 
Is this a park in Westworld? Because <laughs> it has to be. You, I get to go play a doctor, rock and roll guy, alien whoa, fighter. Whoa, whoa, You're Something crazy's going on. Oh, that's Christopher Lloyd. It was like they live. Like he was seeing lizard people standing yeah. around. And so, sorry, what were we talking about? I don't even know now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent world. Uh, no, we were asking. I was asking how this, how we connect this to Westworld. Oh, um, Cause this would make a great park. I mean, who doesn't want to be in an '80s, crappy '80s movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, this, I mean, do you want to be a a rock star musician? Doctor. Doctor that saves lives. Yeah. That saves the universe? Exactly. This yeah. is totally in Westworld. <laughs> or this is like the worst, like, narrative from a total, like a total recall situation? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, you can't. We'll totally have to six degrees. Uh, it's Buckaroo Bonza. You kid. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I'm sure Jeff Goldblum. Is that who you want? Is that who you're getting? I mean, I'm sure he he would connect somewhere. All right. Well, that's your challenge. Uh, Jeff Goldblum's in Thor, Ragnarok. Perfect. So. We can connect. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson. The ugly Hemsworth brother. Yeah, they're all they're all in it. It's yeah, all, it's all it's part of the part. So there you go. Yep. Boom. This must have been an early model of Jeff Goldblum. I had a yeah. <laughs> I had a direct a more direct with Jeff Goldblum connection. He was in Jurassic Park, and that is Westworld. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> Which. Um, I can't wait to watch the new Jurassic World. It's, I mean, we could watch it. We could watch it tonight. We could watch it right now. Right now. <laughs> oh my God! So Christopher Lloyd is one of the is one of the Electroids. Okay. Is that Travis? <laughs> so he's John Big Booty. That's that's hilarious. This is stupid. <laughs> Who's John Big Booty? Uh, I guess John Lithgow. Oh, like okay. uh, earlier when John Lithgow? No, no, no. Uh, Christopher Lloyd is is John oh, okay. Big Booty. Okay, yeah, because John Lithgow was calling him earlier. Gotcha. And we thought maybe it was made up because he's crazy. <laughs> Or I guess that people don't like to say that. Well, He's you mentally for, disturbed. You're scared. I'm gonna get a rock to throw at it or something. I'm gonna poke it with this stick. God, this is a bad movie. <laughs> bad to the bone. Oh my god. <laughs> Shoot it, Bubba. It's paper mache. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> oh lord. Is it a hot chick? Nope. That's a dude in a suit. <laughs> yeah. Throw me my gun, Bubba. Two movies in a row with Bubba's in it. <laughs> Did he just fall? I don't even know. Is he dead? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but look at his face. It's changed. And his hair, his hair's all disappeared. Uh-oh. What's that smell? You smell electricity? 
He's cracking. You're standing in water. What is he? Bird is he radioactive? Oh, cool. Do I look like a nuclear genius? He brought him like a birthday gift. Jupiter? I hope he's alone. Bird, there's something over there. Where? Right there. Again, the dialogue. So good. What is it? Buckaroo Banzai. It's the latest issue. So he's got a comic book as well. That's. Well, yeah, because only aliens read comic books. <laughs> Buckaroo, what's up? Buckaroo. I mean, like I say, Buckaroo Banzai, that dude, everybody wants to be that guy. Yeah, I mean, he can just take motorcycles. I'm switching on the homing beacon. Mark two minute intervals. Now. Look, uh, we got the overthruster, but somebody should have had the professor right from the press conference. Oh, the deuce, you say? The deuce. Dr. Lazardo, maybe? What crate? The crate that shut to that van. Wasn't he in aliens? Go back to the house and dig up the The Kurgan? I feel like if he wasn't He should have been. He was he's in like one of those kinds of movies. I know Ron Perlman was in it. He was in like Resurrection. Uh, I'm sure you've seen Ed Wood, right? No, I can't say I have. Oh, Lord. That's a Tim Burton movie about the director who made, like, Aliens from Planet Nine or something like that. Oh, Planet Nine from Outer Space. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that movie. I feel like uh, they, you know, some of the stuff that they did in that movie. Look, he's smoking. <laughs> an alien? Uh, uh, like an alien bong. But, like, I don't know. It feels like some of this movie kind of yeah, feels yeah. like that movie. Clancy Brown. Yeah. He was in Starship Troopers. He was in oh, Thor yeah. Ragnarok. Hmm. Who was he in Thor? No, 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 no. Surtur. Yeah, it's some kind of Surtur. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. He was the voice. Oh, okay. Um, what movie were you asking? Um, if he was an alien. Aliens. He's been in 271 movies. Yeah, that guy, like, again, they got a lot of these character actors in this movie that I've seen in a bunch of stuff. One of them I've seen in, I think he was in Ghost amongst a lot of different movies. And he has a lot of TV shows and stuff, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember him in Starship Troopers, too. A lot of cop movies. I don't see him in any alien movies. Oh, he was in The Punisher. That's where I saw him last. He's in Pet Cemetery 2. He was the, like, the abusive dad. He was in Gargoyles. I forgot about that. What are they? What are they? How did you know that? <laughs> See this creepy guy on the very right with the brown jacket? Yeah. I think he was in Ghost. And like I say, he's yeah, he a was. lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, he was in Ghost. Yeah. And then do you recognize this other dude? The... This guy on the left here? Yeah. yeah. I got my own help on the way. Now that's an order. I forget what he... He's been in a lot of stuff. A though. lot of stuff, yeah. I want to... Was he... No, he wasn't the coach in... Was he the coach in... Uh, 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 what's the werewolf movie with Michael J. Fox? Teen Wolf? Teen Wolf. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm looking him up right now. I don't think that one is, though. I don't think he is. But for some reason, I have this 
vision of him like eating hard boiled eggs in a movie, and then I think about the coach eating hard boiled eggs in that one movie, Teen Wolf. So I don't know. What do you got against hard boiled eggs? Nothing. I just remember him eating them in some movie. His name is Don Hada or Dan Hada. He's a Hada. Uh, Hada. Uh, his full football is he? Hadea. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Oh, it's a theme song. Yeah, I love the. I actually love this song. Full filmography. Oh, the usual suspect. Yeah, he's been. <laughs> Let's hit it with stuff. a stick. <laughs> oh, see, he's. I think he's a green electroid. I think there's a difference. Were they talking about John Connor just then? <laughs> right. Um. Destroy yourself, John Gant. Okay. Detonator set. My most profuse apologies to my homeland and loved ones. John Baluk is dead. Fell on his head. But perhaps John Parker will get through with our message to Buckaroo Banzai. I said back off! Now damn it, I mean it! Hey! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. Oh, these are bad. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Buckaroo Banzai. You know what? He was an alien. He was an alien resurrection. Oh yeah. He was the. He was like the the general guy or whatever. Right. Because I remember he. No, it wasn't resurrection. It was. Was it aliens two? I, don't, I just remember he he pulls the pin on the grenade and like rolls it in. To a to like a to an escape pod that right. like an alien gets into. Yeah, and he and he just salutes as it as it crashes. So Buckaroo Bones has also got his own uh, helicopter, of course, you know. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, Treasure A. I just love him so much. I mean, he's a full, yeah, plays the piano. It's just the only issue I ever had with Jeff Goldblum is he has got that same way. Of, he's like Christopher Walken. Like, they have that same way of speaking in every movie. That like, doesn't change. Well, have you ever seen... There's been a movie where Christopher Walken didn't do that, and it was awful. Like, <laughs> it was so off-putting. I mean... But I would put Christopher Walken up there in the treasure, so... Maybe we don't have an A, B, or C. They're yeah, just, I think they're it's just treasure. I think it's just treasure, man. Why are you always trying to divide people up, Chip? Uh, I'm not trying to divide people. You are. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? With your A, Bs, and Cs. <sighs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> Can I help you? Hello. Hello. Oh, Rubanzai? You a messenger? What you got here? No, no. The voice of doing is I need to see Boko Rubanzai in person. My name is John Parker. Identify yourself, no? Blue Blazer regular, Pinky Carruthers. <laughs> Sorry, John. Everybody needs to see Buckaroo. Later. Gene, down with Professor Oh, like what a dick. Room. Yeah. We're going to take this cake and eat it alone. <laughs> All these people applied for social security cards in the same town in New Jersey. Here's the other thing about Jeff Goldblum. He always has impeccable taste in glasses. Man, he, yeah, he's just very dapper. He's just a very dapper man. I got some pictures, boys. Check out these names. John Yaya, John Parrot, 
John Big Booty? Maybe not. John Nolan, John O'Connor. John Connor. Wait, Jose. John Smallberries? It's a joke. <laughs> Smallberries. <laughs> <laughs> there are no ages, no places of birth. Uh, Crawford's Mill. Crawford's Mill, 1938. Why is that so familiar? They all have the same first name. John, 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 John. Somebody's playing Starbird. games. Starbird. Statistically impossible. No, uh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, on November 1, October, uh, the, the three days of September, April, June, November, which October was done, all the rest have 31, October 31st. I mean, because you could picture Jeff Goldblum as, like, being a super nerd. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I also imagine that he was probably pretty popular with the ladies. <laughs> oh, for sure. Did you see The Fly? Yeah, I love The Fly. Yeah. landing in Grover's Mill, New Jersey. It all just turned out to be a hoax. So... So, what if it wasn't a hoax? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it isn't a hoax. Man. <laughs> Aliens are dumb. <laughs> They've mastered intergalactic travel and they're. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get like subtlety. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah. And they're, uh. <laughs> Those costumes aren't that, all that convincing, though. If I saw them, I'd be like, that's some aliens right there. <laughs> I mean, that dude doesn't look like an alien. Not him. him. He looks he looks like a wrestler, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably going <laughs> to jump that fence and kick some ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got it like that, huh? You would think those dreadlocks would... Ha- Keep them, weigh them down. Well, you would think the, uh... I don't know. Now you know why the Hong Kong Cavaliers lost last year. <laughs> they suck. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that can do a lot of damage, man. I like how... Buckaroo Banzai's is that is, is that his car that he was working on or was that some other guy's? I think it was, yeah. I like how it's got like uh, sponsorships. I said, who's the white? Guy? <laughs> I said, who's the white? Oh, well, we took him out. Done. Sit down, son. Big Boutte. It might be booby-trapped. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Orson Welles into covering it up. So first he says there's an invasion from Mars, but then he says, no, 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 it's just a radio show hoax. Get it? Oh, let's go. I think they should have Jeff Goldblum just explain it. Yeah. You know how, like, they... He's have, so believable. Yeah. Like, he's just, just condescending enough. <laughs> like, I would... If you had to pick, like, if you, had a, if you wrote a book... And you get to pick the the guy who narrates it. Ooh, yeah. Would you get uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh-huh. Morgan Freeman, Anthony Hopkins? Who, I mean, who would you be? Who'd be your guy? Al Pacino? Um, no, no. <laughs> I like Al Pacino. Um, you know, I go with. The, uh, well, it depends on the book, probably. Does uh, it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Jeff Goldblum would be great, just because. 
you'd hear Jeff Goldblum immediately recognize his voice, yeah. you know. But then, does that take you out of a book if it's, you know, say a Stephen King book or something? I don't know. I think uh, I think Christopher Walken would be a good choice <laughs> for uh, to narrate a book. The self-proclaimed a bloodthirsty butcher. I can't really do the impersonation, but I know his, like, little pauses. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite Simpson sketches is when he was, like, in the library doing, like, a, like, read to the kids thing. Uh-huh. He's like, good night, cow. Yeah. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. And he's like, children. <laughs> yeah. I cannot continue reading this book unless you scoot closer. <laughs> like, oh, it was so funny. Good night, cow. Um... Morgan Freeman, eh. He's good, but everybody, you know. Everybody wants him to do their audiobook. Yeah. You know, this is off off a little bit topic anyway, but it is Tangent World. Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Rowe is my favorite narrator of all time. Yeah. You know Mike Rowe? No. Dirty Jobs. and. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one guy who did all the Stephen... He did, like, most of Stephen King's stuff. Uh -huh. Even after he died, Stephen King dedicated a couple books to him. Right. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he he's really good. Right. Mark Hamill? Ooh, that'd be good. <laughs> he had to do it as the Joker. No matter what it is. No matter what it is. You gotta be kidding, right? Mark Hamill reads Fifty Shades of Grey as <laughs> <laughs> the Joker. That'd be a dark movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yo Yo Dine. Stupid idea. Hong Kong Cavaliers. Where are you going? Getting my guns. Uh, she was crazy when you met her. What yeah. did you expect? Oh, he's got a cult single action. That's pretty sweet. That's a, like, you should have told her that a long time ago, I feel like. <laughs> All right, I think it was a good time to pause. Okay. What do you think? We're about halfway through. Yeah, we're at a uh, 5742. Yeah, 5742. So go ahead and hit pause. Yep. And um, uh, we'll actually be back in about 20 seconds. Uh, it'll be longer for us, but shorter for you. It's the magic of uh, podcasting. Yeah, so we'll be back. Get your... Uh, Get your soda or, you know. Take a deuce. Yeah, take a deuce. You got time. You got time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Actually, due to the, uh, the power of editing, me and Chip took a break, and then... Like, it was way longer than we kind of thought. It was mm -hmm. like, it's you like know, a, a week break. ago. <laughs> <laughs> so a week later, we finally reconvened. We're still paused at 57.42. Yep. And uh, I say we go ahead and uh, start this mother. Let's do this. All right, here we go. We're back. I don't know what to expect here. It disagrees with all the standard pictures producing a magnetic force I'm wrong uh, there's about 45 46 minutes left <laughs> and maybe a little less if they if they included credits in that time I'm sure they do so we're getting there run big booty Sorry, 
Uh, he shocked her, so did probably transferred that that ability. Carries two single action revolvers. Jeez. What local high school did they film this at? Right. Ugh. It's Starro. He's dead. Spread out. Can't be very far off. Okay, Tommy, check the biomedical labs. Reno, you take the physics clean. Jersey, go with Reno. Where you go? Engineering. Got the gym. How do you know that it's the physics wing, ring? Okay. <laughs> All the gravity. <laughs> yeah. Who's <laughs> this? We set the files on fire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just shut it. That's that's all you have to do. Yeah. Shoot them aliens, man. Not the overthruster. He's like uh, he's like the only serious actor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, John Lithgow is can be serious, but he's not in this he's movie. He's got a wide range. But like that guy's like the only one like whose character seems serious in this movie. Uh, Jeff Goldblum's just Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he's dressed <laughs> like a cowboy. I mean, cowboy. Point your gun in front of you, man. <laughs> I feel like he should be carrying a revolver too. Yeah. Dang on dang old aliens. You know this uh <laughs> Buckaroo. I hope she gets it. You know what I mean? Like I hope she get she dies. Oh really? Yeah. See, I think he was going to... I think Bonsai was going to give it to her. Well, I'm sure he won't, he's <laughs> giving it to her, but I'm just... Like, if somebody's going to die by the hands of these aliens, I hope it's her. She's annoying. <laughs> I'm going to go to a club and kill myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overthruster. That sounds like a good porn name. My name is Bradley Overthruster. Bradley Overthruster. <laughs> Where's your Overthruster? Ooh. They can hawk loogies at people. Don't mind me, I'm just leaking hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Arachnophobia, I mean. I can't wait for this remake. Does that mean you're on our side? That's right. What do they have on his forehead? I don't know. Here's the romance part of the movie. I love you. I always wanted you to know. Stealing my helicopter. <laughs> I hope that's insured. They should call this movie like State the Obvious. <laughs> like, what's that? What's that term when like they make movies and they should 
nothing should ever be like spoken out right. It should just be, all be implied. Oh, uh, mm, I don't know. I know what you mean, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, like exposition. And, yeah, this, yeah. This movie is the exact yeah, opposite. Yeah, it's all exposition. Like, <laughs> they have to explain everything to you. And weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, there's an alien from from yeah Dimension. Planet Ten. Yeah, <laughs> like how do you know? <laughs> huh? There must be two kinds. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. No, only two? <laughs> really? In the whole galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> right, like, oh, that that explains why he's in that thing. Yeah. My national security advisor Smirnoff are visiting me, but I have no secrets from them. Well, something has reared its ugly head in outer space, Mr. President, and it looks like the Earth has caught a crossfire. But we have reason to believe that there are vicious red aliens walking free among us. That doesn't look like that'd be doing anything for his back to me. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, it just looks like he's it'd just be laying there. Uh, yeah. The people working on our trenching ball. Although a human sized hamster wheel. It does look pretty like a cool. hamster wheel. <laughs> Time is short. In order to prevent John Warfin's escape, my comrades are at this very moment taking up a geostationary position over New Jersey. This situation is explosive. It is not Irene. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, man? Some kind of race war in New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Oh, they got black electroids now. Oh. I mean, you can't say that now, dude. Yeah, African American yeah. electroid. That's it, Mr. President. <laughs> I just come here preaching a message of love. One love. <laughs> I'm from the beach. <laughs> right on the beach. <laughs> He's like, do you ever just feel like you're, I don't know, running in place, not getting anywhere? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) I'd say commit the man, but we know it's Buckaroo Banzai. Why does that have rear view mirrors? Well, because he... I mean, if you're just running in place, you want to know what's behind you. Well, yeah. You can't turn around. Yeah. Makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Good Times. (laughs) John Lithgow, what what order of treasure would you put him? He's oiling up that, or er, putting honey on her. Is he? Yeah. They're gonna eat her. Or uh, something. He's eating sugar. Christopher Lloyd was talking like was he voicing an alien and or is he playing you know what I mean is he playing two parts or He's, are the aliens also able to look like humans yeah they look okay. like humans to some people okay and to other people they don't look like anything to me yeah Buckaroo got shocked by the black aliens oh that's right okay got you yeah yeah tangent world tangent world <laughs> To the pit with her. <laughs> Good big booty. Wow. Use the water, Cody. I know what she wants. These greetings, 
I wonder if John Lithgow was born with that forehead. Like, <laughs> if he's always had, like, a huge His forehead. poor mother. <laughs> <laughs> If we blow this today, there ain't no tomorrow. We have only 240 minutes remaining. Right. Oh, I see. So they see him as the guy with the dreadlocks, but he sees him as the mm-hmm. African American yeah, electroid. Got, he's got that true. Uh, what's that movie? You know, you two strike groups. Group, where you can see everything and it's like mm. consume and John Parker, you ride with Chaparral. Yeah, you know the movie I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That no human being has ever been inside a place. So who knows what we're gonna find there? Top priority is the only thruster. Without it, Warfin can't get off this planet. This homing device those are the kind of shoulder pads <laughs> yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> That's right. This is this is the eighties, man. <laughs> Communication jam. We'll just keep that take. Keep going. God, right? <laughs> there was another time, I, I swear that uh, Jeff Goldblum blew a line earlier, and he was like, because he, he redid the line. We know, like, oh, we know he's the president because he's got a fruit basket. <laughs> like, this looks like every room I've ever seen in the White House. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm the pessimist general that <laughs> that's gonna see something and be, and be suddenly convinced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that game of Simon. Remember Simon? The president's like, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He and for those of you who aren't watching along and you didn't hear the guy said, I'm barely holding my fudge right now. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> They're terrified. It's the end of the world. This movie. <laughs> I bet they got a huge laugh in the theaters. Though. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> you know they, this would be a great movie like for Tower Theater that's been showing like some some older movies to do. Yeah, we maybe should hit them up. Maybe like Tangent World could be uh, you know sponsor a night. Yeah, that means we have to watch this movie twice. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> once is enough. <laughs> uh, they got a dwarf. Is that? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, Mrs. Johnson, thank you. It's certainly food for thought. No, I'm Senator the Kremlin, sir. What the f- Just dead silence. Then I guess the moment is upon us. Here you go, Mr. President. <laughs> Presidential emergency action document. Are your eyes on it's the giant red booklet that says secret on the front. <laughs> yeah, secret instruction manual. <laughs> God. Declaration of war. Tell me you don't think Trump has the one of those. The short form? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me you don't think Trump has one of those. Uh, I don't know. Bucker is just like cr- straddling that line while he's driving. <laughs> yeah. Like, I get it. Your car can go through solid objects, but... (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Um, um, This movie took a very racist turn. Yeah. (laughs) He might should have... He's, he's talking to like three people. <laughs> yeah, well, and he's talking about aliens, electroids. Yeah. Wow. But you know, you could take that one clip right now and post that online somewhere and like say, you know, 
John Lithgow was a raging racist back <laughs> in the day. People would believe it. They'd be outraged. Why is he still the only one that's human? Uh, was he? An, I don't know that he was ever an alien, though, was he? Right. Like, he just got his head stuck in the... Yeah. So there's, like, one inside him? <clears throat> that's what I was curious about. Or, if, I don't, I'm not sure. I think he's just a crazy man. Yeah, me too. Who they're using to, like, get back to... Maybe he's just crazy enough that they were like, when are we going? Where are we going? Planet 10? When? Real soon. <laughs> <laughs> we're not committal at this point. <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> it, it's happening. It will happen. Yeah. Uh-oh. Buckaroo Bonsai. Bonsai. Showed up in the car. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. The shock tower? That sounds sexy. Speaking of sexy. Oh, no. That is... She... Yeah. That that spider? Terrifying. I mean... Or tarantula? Was that a whatever, tarantula? bro. The equations. Solve them. Enter your data on this key pack. And you better be right. Okay. Uh, it's a piano. <laughs> Any falsehood triggers a brutal charge to your auditory mayor. Who, who's, the, who's had the best performance of this movie so far? John Lithgow, I gotta say. Uh, yeah, that's that's my pick, too. He even looks like an alien in that one. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, Jeff Goldblum throughout the movie, too, but John Lithgow is awesome. <laughs> Oh. Those teeth. Yeah. Those are scary. He actually kind of looks like, uh, what was that? Headless Horseman movie with, uh, Johnny Depp and. Yeah, yeah. And Christopher Walken. Um, he looks like the Christopher Walken head. <laughs> yeah, he does. Getting electrocuted. If um, we were ever in a situation where we could steal a helicopter, would you be able to pilot it? Sure. It's landing it's the issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> would you be able to land it? Uh, I mean... I don't know. Do you think you could pilot it? I can give it a shot. I'm just trying to see if I ever need you on my crew, you know what I mean? Yeah. Our good buddy Travis Griffin... He's never allowed on my crew. No, he, he, he'd he fall asleep at the wheel or something. No, man. well, the first time anybody were to question us... <laughs> we did it, sorry, it was me. He would reveal the whole plan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just... I love Travis, but he he tells the truth <laughs> too much. To a fault. <laughs> Mm, sexy. Yeah, I'd be like, can you turn this up? Yeah. <laughs> Only you can save her from a fate. From a fate. than that of your friend, Mr. Rawhide. Missing circuits in your head, Warden. Big booty. <laughs> Activate your probes. The big booty. Big booty. I kind of want to change my name to Brad Big Booty. Uh, well, you said you were restarting your wrestling podcast. <laughs> no, I'm not. That was a that was a joke. Mm -hmm. Sure, <laughs> sure. I think that'd be your name, Brad Big Booty. Yep. My maybe I'll just start a wrestling career. That'd be that'd be pretty impressive. Big Bootay. I'd have to make sure everybody knew to pronounce it. Big Bootay. Yeah. Fancy like. And you are John Smallberry. 
<laughs> Chip Smallberries. Oh, man. What do you think? You like yeah. it? You down? You know, I, I, I can work with it. <laughs> this is a Tangent World, hosted by <laughs> Brag Big Boutte and, and Chip Smallberries. <laughs> <laughs> For one show only, anyway. Why would Christopher Walken? Not Christopher Walken. Uh, John God Lithgow. Jeff Goldblum had oh. his snorkel in, or like his, like his oxygen rebreather. <laughs> I was kind of curious. You think we got so many, like, apocalyptic movies in the 80s? Like, yeah. Because it was after, like, the Russian, you know, the Cold War stuff. It was, like, during the Cold War stuff? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, wasn't there, like, a couple of kind of Cold War times? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were, like, you know. But, yeah, that was definitely. Where times were a little more tense than normal. Yeah. Yeah. Don't touch it. Might be a bomb, man. That'd be a really cool bomb. Ooh. Just sit <laughs> So even the the different aliens are you know, the different factions don't like each other. That's interesting. Based off color. <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to say, Brad? Uh, it's racist it's a, as hell. That it's a natural movie. thing, natural order of things. I'm not saying that. Wow, I'm Brad. saying that that seems to be wow. the interior meaning of this movie, if there is such a thing. Sorry, Oh, kind of got that <laughs> Michael J. Fox thing going on. Oh, that's two. <laughs> you can't help it. Two in one show. <laughs> Low hanging fruit is the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> if you just shake it, it falls off. <laughs> I feel you. If you get to a third, though. You're out. I'm out. <laughs> Sweet. Is that all it takes? Yeah. I'll show you the door, Chip. <laughs> Chip Smallberries. Chip you sm won't. You won't. not good the shock chair won't work if you're yeah you'd think they'd be on like a backup generator or something yeah <laughs> there's not been one curse word has there it's like I almost lost my fudge, and then that time the gosh dang. Yeah, I don't think there has been. I'm not even gonna <laughs> say what they just said because I don't know what that was like. Did you catch that? Which one? <laughs> I'm not even gonna turn say on it. that gosh darn klaxon. No, after that. Oh no. I don't know. There seems to be an undertone here. I'm noticing. What are those dongs hanging down? <laughs> That's exactly what all their power runs on. <laughs> <laughs> Powered by dongs. <laughs> hmm. Jeff Goldblum. Oh. oh. Sorry. Sydney. Buckaroo. It's good to see you, pal. You got a pistol? Yeah. That was one of his. Where are we? I hate to tell you. Mm -hmm. so where are we going? Is that a good way to hold it, though? Like, kind of right at his head? No, not at all. <laughs> Especially with a finger on the trigger? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> you better not be taking noses off that grindstone. Uh, 
Uh, this is where they filmed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. I can see. Toontown. Yeah. Uh, probably before all the driftwood came in. Yeah. <laughs> A door that just labeled pit. <laughs> I think that I think that that's what we should definitely do during during Tangent World is just come up with facts that we have no idea if they're true or not. On Tangent World, yeah, we're on Tangent World. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, from now on, that's that's what you get. That's what we've always done. Well, <laughs> I believe some of your facts. You mean we've been doing this the whole time? <laughs> I thought we were t- telling real facts. I have been. No, I'm saying like we'll make them up. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, okay. So Every, I, I don't know which one is real and which one's made up. I get no. it. If we're making up facts, it's a fact that we've always done that. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that one almost went right over my head. Yeah. It's a fact. It's we've a fact. always done that. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that should be our catchphrase. Yeah. So, like, we can use it even when things aren't facts. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Tangent world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think this is where he got the idea to make all that stuff for, uh, <laughs> like, the dip, you know, for to kill all the tunes. Yeah. I think so. I think so. I mean, he was the judge. Wait a minute. I've seen some Japanese cartoons that were like this. Girl strapped down, weird slimy slug thing coming towards her. Yeah. 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 Sexy results. Sexy. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, what if, okay, here's my theory. Actually, it's not a theory, it's a fact. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd, Mm -hmm. he just hung around that warehouse till, you know, they were like, hey, we're going to, we're going to make Roger Rabbit now. And he's like, well, I might as well just be the judge. Uh, the... I mean, this is actually Christopher Lloyd's home. Yeah, that's he, what. I, yeah, yeah he, he lives in there like the damp. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd is he's such a great actor, but <laughs> but he'll never leave his house. So they have to go to Christopher Lloyd yeah. and film yeah. at his house. That's a fact. That's a fact. Why I don't know. Right why would they the have? Beach. Why would they have that accent on a different planet in a different dimension? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the beach, man, boy. <laughs> Abba Zaba. Yeah. <laughs> Samson Simpson. He's like. Hey man, have you heard that song that go Unkachaka, Unkachaka? You know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. That's a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ta- change it from Tangent World. It shouldn't sound like anything to you. <laughs> to Dude. that's a fact, and it's always been that. It's always been that way. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Warfin. <laughs> so cheesy. We're gonna have a fist fight with these aliens. Do, 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 do. This seems more like a show you would see like on a Saturday morning, like back <laughs> yeah. in the day, or Saturday afternoon even, when they had just like the crappiest shows on channel <laughs> on like twenty five or thirty four. If you lived in Oklahoma City, like they weren't <laughs> the the main ABCs or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they'd have like just the weirdest shows. <laughs> All the stuff that none of the other big channels had bought the rights to. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that I haven't seen this movie from that. John O'Connor. John O'Connor. 
What's John Smallberry's doing now? I don't know. It will work. <laughs> oh, there we go. We finally got a little. Not quite a curse word, but that was saucy. Whoa, what? What you got there, son? That's not real, is it? Oh, yeah, that's real, Mom. Why, why would you have a kid? I don't get it. That was uh, who? I saw the other guy had that kid with them earlier. One of the bad guys? No, I can't remember which one now. Hmm. You just talked all that smack to him, and yeah. now you want him to like? No, that he was talking that shit to. Uh, Big, oh, John Big Booty. Big Booty. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Ooh. Oh shit, we didn't make the the balloon puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's integral. What is that? It's okay, no worry. It's an insulated liquid. Don't worry. We always fill stuff up with meat. Yep. Definitely part of Westworld. <laughs> totally. There we go. Now we got a shit. What is Big Booty wearing? A meat suit? Oh, those are their spacesuits. Oh. That makes sense. <laughs> a meat vest. They, it looks like they have to be kind of coated in something, or right? That's why he was self-insulating themselves, or I don't know. for dim- interdimensional travel. Maybe you got to cover yourself in spam juice. I don't think they went. I don't think that yeah, happened that, like they wanted. That it doesn't to. count. Yep. No crossover. This is just an awful movie. (laughs) (laughs) Arriva Dirce (laughs) Bonsai. That's my favorite word now. My favorite slogan. Oh, cool. Now it flies. Of course. Free as a bird now. It's got a nipple on it. Why? Just... (laughs) You know... Why does it have rockets on it? I guess it's an escape pod, but... Yeah... I don't know, man. It's just like there's no elegance to any of that design. <laughs> yeah. Take the wheel, man. Flies like a truck. What is a truck? What is a truck? Put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. No shiznit. So you want to play games? <laughs> so... Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary. And he's just driving it with his feet. That's so weird. <laughs> uh oh. Banzai. Banzai. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> oh, oh, where are they going? Are they traveling? No, they're just in the sky. I feel like I could pull off a hat like that. <laughs> those chairs wouldn't be fun. How do they get into those chairs? You gotta climb. They walk on the backs of other Johns. <laughs> of other Johns? The lower Johns. <laughs> We're all John here. <laughs> Welcome, John. I don't know. For all being named John, they seem kind of racist. See, if you did that, all that milk would go everywhere. Like, you can't just spill milk and then go upside down. Right. How how far up would he be to be up amongst the clouds that far? Pretty high. I mean, would you be able to do that? Uh, he'd have a hard time breathing, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I imagine he could. I mean, he might have passed out from, you know. That just seems like an awful high high altitude to be. Uh, it's amazing that he was able to land so precisely yeah, right there. Yeah, beautiful land. Because I don't know if you've ever been skydiving, but it's not like an exact thing. Right, right. Again. Why don't you point that gun somewhere else, yeah, boy? Yeah, that, that kid's finger's not even on that trigger. You could take that. <laughs> You did good, boy. My overthruster. <laughs> you got his job. All right. Want to ride with me in the jump car? Wow, you know it. You know it. I have to ask my dad first. Then you ask your dad, I'll wash up. <laughs> oh, buckaroo. <laughs> Sydney. Wow. Okay. I did not. Just, <laughs> I swear I heard I did a lot of coke. <laughs> just, uh, I did a lot of coke. Yeah. No, the line was, I did all I could. Oh, yeah. Did all the coke I could. <laughs> we'll just use it. Whatever. This is Jeff Goldblum. Whatever Jeff says, we'll use. What the hell happened here? Is it the twin lady? Is it... Looks just like a bunch of pillows to me. Ah, she one of those synthoids or whatever. Electoids. She's really not wearing much clothing. Brought me back to life with your creepy, unasked for, and unwanted kiss. Mm -hmm. Hashtag me too. <laughs> like real talk. I mean, if you bring her back to life, though, is that okay? I mean, she oh, owes you a life uh, debt, kind of like Chewbacca. Yeah. And, and, you know, Chew but you know, if you don't have permission, you can't just be. Yeah. Stealing a kiss. I mean, even if electricity happens. Yeah. I don't know. I think she's a host. Yeah. She just came back online. Freeze all motor functions. <laughs> <laughs> so they just kind of like watch people too? Yeah. They're from the eighth dimension, man. They just, you know. They ain't got nothing to go on, yeah. going on. See, that's not going to stop them. What is this? What is this right here? So what? Big deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Watch for the next adventure of Buckaroo Banzai. What happened to that? Buckaroo Banzai against the, cri- the World, World Crime, Crime League. League. Wait, okay. So wait, wait, wait. This is it. Oh, this I know. What this, this is the is. trailer. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the best part of the movie. <laughs> I was ex- waiting for this the whole time. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Buckaroo Banzai, Peter Weller, Dr. Emilio Lizardo, and something else. They didn't leave it up long enough. It's just like Peter Weller, Dr. Who, walking through a, like a drain area. Like, uh, oh, like this a- is the Hon- the Hong Kong Cavalier music video, right? Oh, this might be, yeah. What? Why else are they walking... So cool. Yeah, this is totally the Cavalier music video. <laughs> oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and we're walking. Oh, shit. I'm back for the music video, Ma. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to play the trumpet. We're a ska band now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Kind of want to start wearing two different colored belts. Oh, that would be so dope. I think I can get away with it. I see you more dressed like Sydney here. I wish. <laughs> Is that sandals with socks? Yeah, it's those Japanese things. Oh, I see. And this dude wearing a kangle with, like, rhinestones on it. <laughs> This guy, I don't even know. Casper? <laughs> I don't even remember him in the movie. Yeah. Like, for, I think he was a couple times in the lab. This is a, not a very good music video. No. And, it, like, there could be, like, more dancing or something for this scene, right? I mean... I feel like there could be more music. Yeah. Just, just kind of walk. Upbeat, you know, like maybe do something stupid for a second, but don't really get into it. Into it, we don't want it to look real cool. Buckaroo Banzai. We should go just writing that all over the city. Man, you go right ahead. That's hashtag you too. I'm not. I'm not culturally appropriating anything. What? That's yeah. a movie. Well, I'm just saying. What's yep. bonsai? Mm, I'm just saying, man. It's two different cultures you're taking right there. Buckaroo, what's that one? That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Jet car manufacturer, <laughs> thrust racing. <laughs> um, I'm not believing that all this many people worked on this movie. <laughs> you know, I'm just ready for the sequel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> Maybe that's what they were talking about. Not a reboot, but that there was a, a sequel. That oh, that'd be awesome. Peter Weller's so old now. I swear, I feel like maybe like uh, Kevin Smith was talking about like he was pitching it or maybe it actually it was agreed to be done at one point. But you know how like a few of his movies he's announced or whatever and then they <laughs> haven't come to fruition. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. I, I guess uh, there's probably no need to sit through all the. Credits. I mean, there might be an after credit thing. You think? Probably well, not. Well, there's only uh, just a few more seconds left anyway, so we'll see what happens. 1984, and it's over. Nope, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, performance of the movie goes to John Lithgow. I guess mm-hmm. we'd probably both mm-hmm. be in agreement. Yep. Uh, second best thing would be Jeff Goldblum. Yep. Peter Weller. I mean, ah, whatever. I don't think he, he was just he, too cool for school the whole time. Yeah, yeah. He was neither good nor bad. He was just there. Yeah. Uh, con- I don't know. The movie had like some weird undertones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as far as the aliens. Yeah. Um, a lot of racist like <laughs> stuff that if you just if it was now like, like you said if you took a clip out, out and yeah. just played yeah. people would freak out. Yeah. Um, so, but like I say, I, is it. Is it entertaining? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is it good? Maybe not. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> like, it's no big trouble, little China. 
Right. I mean, right. I would put them both in the same kind of like production value. Sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, and also in kind of like that sci-fi action yeah. territory. That but might you be know, a good movie one just has one a time. way better. Like one was just a way better story. Like yeah, well, it had Kurt. Well, like I say, really good actors in this. I'm not sure I would say Kurt Russell's better than anybody, but Kurt Russell is. He was awesome. White Earp, man. Yeah, yeah. He's not the best White Earp, but he's a White Earp. He was a great White Earp, and in, in, in that he was Kurt Russell. Yeah, and he's awesome. He was in uh, Overboard. Yeah, which is also a hashtag Me Too movie. Is it now? Well, I mean, think about it. Like, well, yeah, he kind of like convinces yeah. this chick that they're married. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But weren't they in real life? Wasn't that Goldie Hawn? Yeah, I mean so, that's a, that's a fact. That's but. fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Tangent World. Yeah. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell should have been in this movie. No, I'm not saying Kurt Russell. I mean, I'm just his character in that movie. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I know. Uh, but what if we had, instead of Pete, Peter Weller, what if we had Kurt Russell? This has been a way better movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but like I say, it was a good movie. Um, just because of the uh, cheese factor and all that. If you can if you can just sit back and enjoy it for what it is, it's great. I love it. So, <laughs> it was a good pick. If you have some movie suggestions for us, you should email us, jestworld at gmail.com. Um, anything that you want us to watch because we're trying to bang some out here. Yep. Yeah, get yep. them out there for you. You can, of course, catch all of our podcasts, Jest World, Tangent World. They're available on Spreaker, uh, YouTube, and iTunes podcasts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, we've got two more episodes left of West World. Yep. So we'll be doing the next Jest World this Sunday after... Uh, the la- second to last episode of Westworld, and then the season finale. We won't do a live show that night. We'll do a show the next day. So yep, that's how that will work. Uh, unless Chip wants to do the live show at like midnight that night. No, I- but I think we'll do like uh, kind of more of like what we did on the first couple episodes, where sure. we do like an in-depth watch. Yeah, and I'm gonna watch it a couple times. That's yeah, I feel absolutely. So absolutely. So, yeah, uh, we'd love for you to join us on all the shows. Uh, If you don't mind, I'd like to plug my Nerds to Men. If you just kind of like movies, music, pop culture, stuff like that. But, of course, we're all nerds here. So (laughs) uh, check that out at Nerds to Men. And, uh, yeah, Yeah. that's about it. All right. Well, until the next (laughs) show, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, Have a good night.